you guys, I want to talk to you a little bit about the difference between hot press and cold press paper, and I'm going to talk also a lot about how I paint on hot press paper. So I've done this painting of In Peacock Shadows, is what I call it, several times. The first time was in 2003, and I don't know what paper I used back in 2003. And then in 2006, I painted it again, but I think I used hot press, but it was so long ago, I don't remember. And then the third time I did it as a tutorial on cold press for my Patreon students. And I did like a full two and a half, three hour long paint along with me with a downloadable traceable and everything on the cold press paper. And I do like how that one came out, but it didn't have that smooth look of my 2006 painting and the colors weren't as bright so I was looking at that painting again and I thought to myself maybe I painted that on hot press maybe I need to revisit hot press so I decided to try the painting a fourth time on hot press and also what led to this um, new experiment is I'm on a lot of watercolor forums on Facebook and I've been noticing several posts lately of why people use hot press and what they like about it, which helps me because I did not like it at all. I feel like whenever you paint on it, it looks really blotchy, it doesn't blend well, you can't get soft edges, but people kept saying that they could get really good detail on it and it seems to make colors look brighter. So that led me to be a little curious and I wanted to try it out. So. Without further ado, let's jump into this painting and I'll explain to you how I painted on this hot press, Arches Hot Press. I think it's 140 pound, I'm not sure what the pound is. Um, but um, let's get started and I'll show you how I painted this guy in Peacock Shadows again. And by the way, the peacock color is now turquoise. Holbein used to make a paint with um, uh, PB17 pigment only. Only PB17, nothing else, and they called it Peacock. And there are other paint colors out there now by a lot of different manufacturers that are called Peacock, but that's not the same color. That's not the one I'm talking about. So they discontinued that, much to everyone's chagrin, but then they did release a paint through their Iridori line, which I think is um, a Japanese line and um, it's called Antique Turquoise and that is only PB17 and as far as I know there's no other watercolor paint that uses only PB17 in it so it's a beautiful bright color it kind of granulates and I just recently found out I can no longer get it very easily I have to order it through an online store that's based out of Canada so the shipping's really expensive so I went ahead and bought another tube because it seems like it's getting harder and harder to get here in the US. So that is the antique turquoise that I used in this painting. Anyway, let's get started. So as with any painting that I do, I always start out by doing the masking and I mask the whiskers and the little glint in the eye. And sometimes I'll do the little claws like this cat, his paws are showing so you can do a little bit of masking on the claws too if you want to do that. And then I go in with um, clear water and I do that on my cold press paper too but that's even more important for my particular technique because I want the edges to be really soft and I want my colors to blend, blend really softly and smoothly together and I find that hard to do on hot press paper. So. In this exercise, this is just a study, it's not going to be a finished painting, but in this painting I used a lot more water than I would on cold press. So that's a di one difference between hot press and cold press. At least for my approach and style, I had to use a lot more water in order to keep everything blending nicely and to keep the edges soft. So for instance, here I am painting in the background and I painted clear water right over the back of the cat. I left some parts of the cat's back dry because I wanted it to have that pure white sparkle. And I kept the face dry. So everywhere where you see perfectly white areas, I kept it dry. And then I painted my clear water around the face, over the back a little bit so I could create a soft edge. 
and completely over the side of his, the back of his neck and the background because I want that to be a completely disappearing edge in this painting. So I used a mix of that Holbein Iridori Antique Turquoise. I used um, Permanent Magenta. I used Windsor and Newton Permanent Magenta. I used Indigo Blue. And in some areas, I mixed those together in the background and I wanted the background to be a little gray. The reason why I paint a gray background is because it provides a good contrast to the brighter colors in the painting. In the case of this painting, the bright colors are antique turquoise and I really wanted that antique turquoise to pop. So I contrasted it with some grays and the grays that I create are usually from a mix of burnt sienna and ultramarine blue and maybe some other colors. And so I used those colors in the background. I also use them in the cat. I'm also using indigo blue in my shadows. So that indigo blue is a nice gray blue and it's dark. And so it was nice in the shadows too, right where I wanted the cat's body to be touching the floor. I added some indigo blue in my shadows to really um, ground the cat. And indigo is kind of a grayer color. It's not bright like this antique turquoise. So it helped pop that antique turquoise out too. And then I'm going in to do the eyes and I'm using antique turquoise in its purest form in the eye and then I used for my eyeliner I used indigo blue and then one of the things that I noticed about hot press paper is that the paint once you put it on the paper even if you put it on moist paper it stays put so if you get go back over it with a damp brush or go up to the edges of it you can soften edges without the paint moving which is nice so like the top eyeliner of that eye, I put that paint down and then almost I turned right around and went with a damp brush along the top of it to soften that edge and it all stayed in place but it softened really nicely. So that's a nice little subtle effect you can get with hot press that I think is harder to do with cold press because the paints will move a little bit more on cold press paper. And then I floated in a little bit of the antique turquoise in the face, but I also used a mix of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna for that um, grayish brown underpainting layer on the face. In the, in the ears, I used naphthol red and a little bit of uh, quinacridone gold. And then in the ears, where I wanted them to be really dark, I... Um, used a mix of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna and I used cream consistency ultramarine burnt and burnt sienna so that it would get really dark and notice you can tell I've got my paper moist so whenever I'm working in an area I always pre moisten it with clear water and then I go in with my paint almost always and especially on this hot press paper so you want to keep your your paper moist to get soft edges on hot press. Otherwise, it's impossible. All right, and then I'm doing the little paws and using a mix of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna again. And that is the best mixture for so many different colors, especially if you are a pet portrait painter or you paint a lot of cats and dogs, a lot of fur, horses. It will work on a golden retriever. It will work on a German shepherd colored uh, dog or a Siamese cat. I use that mix for all my different colors of Siamese cats um, and all different kinds of breeds of dogs and other cats too. And my black cat. I have a pure black cat. So the more ultramarine blue you add to that mix, the blacker your paint will look, the grayer it will look, and the more burnt sienna, of course, the warmer it will look. The more golden retriever and it will look. And for golden retrievers and um, like orange tabbies like this right here, you want to add a yellow usually, like quinacridone gold deep is a good one. Um, I used to have that color and I ran out and then I got quinacridone gold and to me that color is a little unnatural yellow somehow for fur. So I like quinacridone gold deep for golden retriever colors, orange marmalade cat colors, or I don't even know if that's orange marmalade, that's even a lighter color, tabby cat than um, 
orange marmalade. But anyway, <laughs> I'm getting away from my painting. All right, so you can see what I do for every different section of the painting. The first step is to get it all wet. The next step is to float in the color. The next step is to let it dry completely and then either go work on a different section of the painting or let that completely dry again and then float in some more clear water for your next layer. And here I'm doing little whisker dots and that is just on um, moist paper but fairly drier, dampish paper so that the dots really stay in place but they spread just enough to be soft. You don't want them to look pasted on and you don't want the dark areas of the cat's um, markings to look pasted on. And in general, that's just my style. Everything is really soft except for the center of interest where I have a lot of hard edges and then the rest of the painting will be soft. And to do that, you just always have to work wet and wet. And even that's even more so true on hot press paper. You need a lot more water and you need to really make sure that it's pretty darn wet to get these soft passages on hot press paper. But I do think the colors are a little bit brighter on this hot press paper. And then I floated in a little bit of quinacridone gold in there along his neck and chest area just to warm him up and to provide some contrast between the cat and that bright antique turquoise. And I'm using, by the way, my favorite brushes are silver black velvet. And that's a silver black velvet size eight round that I was able to use for pretty much this whole painting. I'm going in and darkening those ears again with this in a second layer. And the, the silver black velvet brushes are great because they're not too expensive. I bought three for $45 and they have a beautiful tip on them so you can really get a lot done with them. They hold a lot of water, but not too much water and they have beautiful tips so you can do really good detail with them too. And I'm just getting more detail around the eyes as I finish this painting. I'm really going to focus on getting the little furs and hairs around the eye really detailed. And another trick to make those eyes really stand out is to make sure you get the eyeliner really dark. And I've said this many times, but eyes are like small little paintings in and of themselves. You wanna make sure you get every single value in them. You want lights, pure white. You want darks and you want mediums. And in different ratios, like a lot of medium and a little tiny glint of the light white and a little maybe medium amount of eyeliner. Um, you don't wanna have equal amounts of the values in any one area. The ears are similar. Usually you want lights, mediums, and darks in the ears. Paws seem to be that way. You want lights, mediums, and darks in your paws. And then in the painting overall, of course, you want lights, mediums, and darks to really make a good composition. All right, and then this painting is kind of small. I did mean it just to be a study to see what I thought about painting on hot press. So the whiskers look really thick. A lot of people say, oh, your paintings are so beautiful. Half the battle is finding a good reference with beautiful light. If you have not discovered um, the free reference photo groups on Facebook, I highly recommend them. I find beautiful pictures there of all different types of subjects. And um, the photographers are very friendly and um, they have allowed me to use a lot of pictures. This picture, in fact, actually is not from there though. It's from uh, my friend Karen Sturzenegger who lives in Switzerland, who I met because of her photos online years and years and years ago, back in probably 2000. And then we became friends and we ended up traveling together. Um, and I actually met this cat who lives in Switzerland and I live in the US. So the internet was a different place and time then and people were much more trusting about being friends with people they met on the internet. And it's probably smart not to be friends with people, random people you meet on the internet, but what did I know? I ended up in Costa Rica and Switzerland because of it, because of this, these cats, in fact, this exact cat. All right, so I'm loving how dramatic this painting came out on the hot press. Um, you just have to be careful when you're painting on hot press to use water. And when I sign it, I signed it in indigo blue, and I chose that color 
because it's a more subtle color. It won't draw attention to itself and it matches the indigo blue that I used in the shadows. So um, you wanna think in terms of your signature being part of the composition. And also that line going across the back of the painting is a nice part of the composition, I think. I think it kind of holds the whole composition together because it, it provides that contrast of a straight line with all the curved, beautiful lines of the cat. And another thing that I would like to point out just about the composition of this painting is that, do you see that completely disappearing edge of the neck that I painted completely together with the background as if they were one in the same shape. Um, that can really help take your paintings to the next level too. But there you go, folks. There is my painting on hot press paper. And if you would like to see more in-depth tutorials, if you would like to watch the um, painting tutorial that I did on cold press paper, which is two and a half to three hours long. You also get a downloadable traceable with it. You can join me on Patreon for that. At the $5 level, you will get instant access to several tutorials of several different um, things, cats, dogs, hummingbird, lots of different things, chickens. <laughs> and then at the $13 level, I send out paint dot samples, including that antique turquoise every month to my $13 and above Patreon members who live in the US. And then at my $18 level, I, I do one critique of your painting a month. So come and join me over there. We have a lot of fun. And don't forget to subscribe. And I upload a new video every week. So don't miss that. And also be sure to leave me a like and please comment and let me know that you were here. Let me know what you think of the video. And I'd love to see your paintings too. So you can join my Rachel Parker watercolor workshop on Facebook and show off your paintings there. So I hope to see you online and I'll talk to you guys soon.